Sometimes when life seems gentle and blessings slide my way, I turn my gaze away from you and soon forget to pray. But when the sky grows darker and courage turns to voice cries upward with words you long to Good evening again, church family, and welcome uh, to yet another uh, Wednesday evening virtual summer service. Um, I was talking with my wife uh, last night, uh, and she said, you know, I think you preach better in front of people. And I said, no kidding. Um, And I think uh, both pastor and myself can uh, second that Uh, it's, it's... difficult preaching in front of a camera but I know uh, that you all are watching uh, which is an encouragement uh, to me um, but it's not the first uh, it's not our first choice uh, per se to do these things virtually Um, but I'm trying to make them as 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 personable uh, as as possible but uh, this too shall pass Lord willing so uh, just a few more weeks now with this virtual setup. Uh, I'm thankful to still be able to do this uh, and to be able to look into God's Word with just a kind of a different setup um, with you, but uh, looking forward to the time to being together and, and actually being able to preach uh, and see your faces as, as uh, I'm speaking. Um, but we'll take advantage of what God has given to us uh, so let's do that uh, this evening as we continue our our study in uh, our series entitled Platforms. 
Uh, we have um, looked at quite a few uh, different platforms that perhaps we hadn't really necessarily thought of as platforms before. Um, turn in your Bibles to John 17, and as you're doing that, John chapter 17, as you're turning there, uh, I hope that we're beginning. I hope that we're beginning to understand the importance of each of these platforms that we have already discussed on Wednesday nights. And God really has given us some, uh, in, in His grace, graciousness, has given us some unique and special ways uh, to promote Himself. Uh, to promote his grace, his goodness, his greatness, uh, his gospel. Uh, and we've really seen and discussed the importance, uh, if you think all the way back to the beginning of our study, we, we, we discussed the importance of obedience, uh, the importance of our platform of dedication to him. Uh, we've seen the importance of our, our platform of repentance when we looked at the life of David. Uh, we looked at the importance of our platforms with our relationships to God and relationships to others. Um, the last few weeks, we began to understand that victory is a platform that God gives his children, but that the victory doesn't come from us. It comes from Christ. Uh, our victory comes from Christ alone, and that platform we stand on is Christ. Um it's a powerful tool when we minister one to another, that being our platform of unity. Uh, it's, our, it's a powerful uh, tool uh, in our outreach as we minister to those within uh, our community. Our unification under Christ and our unification one towards another because we are unified with a common goal uh, is, is a wonderful witness and a wonderful testimony to those even with, within our church body, but those outside of the church body uh, as well. And, and tonight we're going to narrow it down even more. And as we go throughout the rest of the summer, we're just going to keep getting more and more narrow, Lord willing. Um, and uh, how we can, what platform we can specifically minister one to another. We're narrowing that down again this evening and our topic this evening is something that we as children of God, we as little Christs, Christians, must do. It's, it's a non-negotiable, uh, and it's also a platform. Again, we pr might not have thought of this as a platform, but it is a platform. This is something we must all do as a believer. Uh, the topic is vital for our relationship with God. Uh, it's vital for our relationships with others. It's, our, it's vital with our relationships in the church. It's vital with our relationships outside of the church. It's vital for our outreach. Uh, it's vital, this topic is vital for our service. And, and tonight, I want to look at the platform of prayer. The platform of prayer. You're in John chapter 17, and we're going to get there in a minute. Uh, but all throughout the Gospels, let me back up. Who is our chief example? That being Christ, okay? Jesus Christ is our chief example in everything, even in prayer. Uh, and, and all throughout the Gospels, we see Christ spending time purposefully, specifically spending time in prayer with his heavenly Father. Uh, you look at Mark 1, you look at, at, at Luke 5, uh, verse 16. Uh, there's several times in the Gospels where it, the Gospels say that Christ withdrew himself into the wilderness to do what? To pray. That was his sole purpose of going into the wilderness, to get away, to pray. Uh, there was uh, his temptation with Satan. Uh, again, how long he was in the wilderness praying and fasting. Uh, 
Uh, and yet there were specific times where Christ withdrew himself to pray, to communicate, to commune with his heavenly Father. Uh, Luke chapter 6, verse tells, uh, verse 12 tells us uh, that and it came to pass in those days that Christ went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Uh, and then, then the next part of that chapter tells us who he picked for his disciples. So we know that night of prayer was dedicated really to communication with God and praying for those men that were getting ready to be selected to be the disciples of Christ himself. Uh, you look at Mark chapter 14 uh, and, and uh, the Garden of Gethsemane and uh, when they, when the disciples and Christ came to the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, Christ then said, you need to wait here and watch and pray. I am going to go a little bit further and pray some more. Again, understanding what was right around the corner for him in his trial and death and the shedding of his blood. So there's all these glimpses of Jesus' prayer life uh, throughout the throughout the Gospels, um, prayer is communication with God. And that's what prayer is. It's communicating communion with God, and and we don't know all of the details. It's, the Gospels don't give us specifics of every single prayer that Christ prayed, um, but there are times where we get just a small glimpse into Christ's prayer life. Uh, Jesus tells Peter in Luke chapter 22 uh, that that Christ himself had prayed for Peter's faith to be strong. Again, an intercessory prayer for Peter. Uh, Christ also taught his disciples and us how to pray. This is the model that you need to pray. And that was in uh, Mark 6 and Luke 11 uh, with what we would call the Lord's prayer. So we get these little glimpses of how Christ prayed. We get to John chapter 17, and we looked at this, if you think, way back when we were going through the book of John uh, on Sunday mornings. We went through John 17, and this is quickly becoming one of my favorite passages uh, in all of Scripture, because this is, remember what we're studying in Hebrews, Christ being our high priest. This is considered, John chapter 17 is considered the high priestly intercessory prayer of Christ for those that belong to him. Specifically in this context, it's his disciples, but it also can be applied to us as, his, as believers, as followers of Christ now. So this would be considered the high priestly prayer of Christ himself. Um, Jesus prays, and we'll get to this in a little bit, but Jesus prays in verse 20 of John 17. Uh, he prays for those who believe in me in their word. That's us, those who believe in the name of Christ, those who have trusted Christ unto salvation. Uh, that means that all of this means that as, as followers of Christ, Jesus himself prays for you and for me. We could just end this evening with that and be encouraged because we know that we have a high priest that intercedes, that prays for us. What an, what an awesome thought. What a great Savior that we serve. We don't deserve to have a perfect person that perfect person of Jesus Christ praying for us. Like, I don't deserve that. And yet he does constantly before the presence of God. And so this evening, what we'll look at is John 17 and the high priestly prayer that Christ prays. And Jesus prays throughout this chapter. We're going to narrow it down, but it's an overall view, uh, an overview uh, if you will, of John 17, Christ prays for many things dealing with us. 
He prays that we would know God. He prays that uh, we would be guarded from the world. Uh, he prays that we would be unified in the spirit. Uh, he prays that we would be full of joy, that we would be protected from Satan himself. Uh, he prays that we would be sanctified by his very word, that being the word of God. Uh, he prays that we would be witnesses uh, in the world uh, through our love of Christ. Uh, he prays that, that we would look towards eternity to be with him. Uh, and he closes out the chapter that we would, that we would uh, experience uh, the potency of his love. And by doing so, we love one another as he loves us. That's kind of the overview of John 17. And since his ascension uh, back into heaven, Christ is still praying for us. Think back with me to Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25 when, where it says that Christ ever lives to make what for you and for me? He ever lives to make intercession for those who draw near to God through the doorway that is Jesus Christ. So Jesus is our personal advocate to God, the Father, and the permanent propitiation uh, for our sins. 1 John 2, um, 1 reminds us that, that we have that advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Uh, Jesus intercedes constantly on our behalf. And again, what an incredible concept. The perfect Son of God is praying, interceding for us at all times. Christ is our advocate, and even Satan himself is our accuser sometimes. Uh, and, and he uh, showcases, if you will, our sin before Almighty God. Uh, Revelation chapter 2 tells, or sorry, Revelation chapter 12 tells us about that. Um, Zechariah chapter 3, excuse me. <coughs> Ooh. <coughs> excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm not going to start the video over again just because I sneezed. But uh, Christ, when Satan accuses us before God's throne, uh, Revelation 12, Zechariah chapter 3. Um, we don't have to worry about that showcasing of our sin because Christ, through his power, has removed all of that condemnation and, and dark spots, if you will, on our record. We just talked about this this last, this last week, the power that is in the blood. Um, Romans chapter 8 tells us, Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? Uh who is the one who justifies? It's God that justifies. Who is the one that condemns? Well, it's Jesus Christ is the one who has died. And more than that was raised from the dead, who now is at the right hand of God, who is interceding for us. Romans 8 uh, verses in verses 33 through 34, I believe that's what that is. But Christ is interceding for us. And we sin, folks. We sin, we make mistakes, but when we bring our sins to Christ, we are forgiven, and he advocates or intercedes to God the Father on our behalf. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and he's just to forgive us our sins, to cleanse us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, our sins of commission and our sins of omission. He cleanses us. He intercedes for us. He is that advocate. Though our sins are like scarlet, they're going to be white as snow. Though we have guilt and we have blood on our hands and on our hearts, he'll make them white as snow. Isaiah chapter 1. Christ wipes our slate clean so that we can love and serve him really in true freedom of spirit uh, through repentance. Christ is able to intercede for us because why? He can empathize with us. He lived on this earth. He was tempted just like we were tempted, and yet he was found without sin. Uh, he's our great high priest, what we're looking at in Hebrews. 
and, and through him, we have unlimited access to the Father. Folks, these are awesome, awesome truths. Seeing then that we have this great high priest, he's passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let's hold fast to our profession, that being belonging to Christ. Hebrews chapter 4. Seeing then we have a great high priest who was passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Because of that, let's hold fast to our profession, hold fast to our faith. For we don't have a high priest, uh, for, we no, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted just like we are without sin. Let us therefore do what? Come boldly before the throne of grace so that we can obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And in time of need, that's always. We are always in that time of need. Because Jesus is interceding for us, we can have full confidence that we can approach God and be met with mercy and be met with grace. We've come full circle. Christ intercedes for us, therefore we can come boldly before the throne of God and approach him through the blood of Christ and obtain mercy and obtain grace. That's the foundation for what we're getting ready to discuss which is how then should we pray for one another? Should we pray? Well, here's a fair question. Do we pray for one another? Scripture makes it very clear that we pray for others just as Christ prays for us. We intercede or uh, bring others before the throne of grace God's very throne, just as Christ does for us. Now, we don't do it perfectly as Christ does, obviously. But this platform of prayer, for the most part, is a silent, unknown, private platform that most of those who are around us will never see. Uh, yet prayer is one of the most powerful platforms that we have that we're going really ever going to discuss because why Christ places a, a prioritizes uh, communion with heavenly the uh, our heavenly father Christ prioritizes that therefore it's obviously important and sometimes um, we pray selfishly unfortunately and something that I have started doing and this is not a feather in my cap this is just the Holy Spirit raking me over the coals uh, and causing me to change my prayer life and something that I've started since I've been in pastoral ministry uh, is I, I believe God wants us to pray specifically very specifically for others we're very good at praying selfishly uh, with ourselves first and foremost in our prayers. We're very, very good at that. We look at our needs, we pray for our needs. We look at the needs of our family, we pray for the needs of our family. We uh, ask the Lord to heal us of certain things, and we pray selfishly. Um, if you look at the pattern of Christ, though, you find that others were his priority in his prayer. And currently, he intercedes for us Therefore, we are his priority. Uh, I firmly believe that our prayers must prioritize others. One of the most powerful things we can do for one another is perhaps something that they will never see or recognize or even possibly know. That being prayer, intercession, one for another. And John 17, again, is a beautiful prayer of interception of the Lord Jesus Christ as he prayed specifically for you and for me. And I've tried to make it a habit uh, to pray for others just as Christ prays for me. 
Uh, and we see in this chapter, there's really kind of a, a 10 step process, uh, an intercessory process following the model of Christ. And I want to look at those briefly with the time that we have left this evening. So if you would, can you take out a pen and a paper? And I want us to write down these 10 things. And tr- I want us to try this as a church family. I want us to try this as we pray for one another. I want us to pray these specific 10 things. Okay. Uh, it, it's, we, we, we find that within the local church, if we were to pray like this, it's going to be very very difficult for us to be disunified one with another. It's going to be very, very difficult for backbiting, for gossip. It's going to be very difficult for those things to happen when we're praying according to John 17. As Christ prays for us, we pray for others. So write these down, if you would. Uh, And the next time you pray for someone within our local church, for your pastors, uh, for whoever it might be, follow this pattern uh, and get really try to get into the habit of focusing on others with our prayer rather than just on ourselves. Okay, let's just jump right into it. Uh, John chapter 17. Before we do that, can we pray? I know I've talked a lot, but I I do want to pray as we go through uh, John 17. So let's pray and then we'll jump right into John 17. Lord, we ask that as we look at these, these steps that you have modeled for us in our prayer, Uh, that we would change uh, the way we view prayer, that it would be focused on one another, not on ourselves. And Lord, that we would understand the power and the potency that you allow us to participate in through the blood of your Son. So as we pray for one another, may we follow the pattern, the perfect pattern of Christ here in John 17. May you be with my my uh, my mouth, that nothing that is said would contradict your word, that your Holy Spirit would change us uh, with our platform, our precious platform of prayer. We pray this in your son's name and through his power, Jesus Christ. We pray this in his name. Amen. Okay, John chapter 17. Uh, there, here's the 10 step process or inter- intercessory prayer process for one another with our platform of prayer okay let's start with number one pray that the glory of god this is praying for others okay praying for whoever you're praying for at that time pray that the glory of god might be paramount in their lives pray that the glory of god might be paramount in their lives. Look at verses 1 through 5 in John chapter 17 with me. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son may also glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is eternal life that they might know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast Sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me with thine own self and the glory which I had with thee before the world was. When we pray for others, we must pray that those individuals would recognize the importance, the chief, the paramount importance of of the glory of God. And again, 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether therefore you eat, you drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. This is my prayer for others. I pray for someone specifically in the church. Lord, help them to understand the importance of your glory and your glory alone. Number two, pray that they would manifest or make known the name of God to all they come in contact with. Again, pray that they would make known the name of God. Let's look at verse 6 and 7. Christ says, I have manifested thy name or made known thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest me, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known all 
that now they have known all that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Pray for people in the church. Pray for those that are around you that they would showcase Christ, that they would prove the name of God, that they would make known God's glorious name to all of those who they come in contact with, whether it be at work, whether it's within their family, within the church, privately, that they would make known the name of God. Number one, that they would pray. We pray that the glory of God might be paramount in their lives. Pray that they would manifest the name of God to all they come in contact with. Number three, that they would prioritize God's word. That they would prioritize God's word. Look at verse eight with me. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. Again, the first phrase, given, for I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. Again, the precious word of God that we hold in our hands right at this very moment. We have easy access. We have apps on our phone that we can easily access the very words of God. How awesome is that? When I pray for others, when I intercede for others before God's throne, Lord, may they prioritize your word in their lives. Number four, that they would remember whose name they bear. I know I say this all the time. I'm not talking about our last names. I'm talking about the name of Christ. Remember whose name you bear. Lord, who owns this individual? It's you that owns this individual. They claim Christ, therefore you claim ownership over their lives. I ask that you would that that they would remember whose name that they bear. Let's that's verses nine and ten. Look at that with me. Verse nine, I pray for them. I pray not for the world, for the but for them which thou gavest me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. We bear the name of Christ. Remember that, Lord, this individual, may they remember that they bear your name. Uh, number five. Lord, I ask that they would be unified with Christ. And by being unified with Christ, that therefore they are unified one with another. Lord, it's number five again, that they would be unified with Christ and be unified with one another. Look at verse 11 through 12. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father, to Christ talking about his assumption, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Again, verses 11 through 12, Christ gives us a, a glimpse of his relationship with his Father. And just as Christ is unified with his father. That's his prayer for you and for me, that we might be unified one to another, just as Christ is unified with his father. First of all, that we might be unified with Christ, just as Christ is unified with his father. But secondly, that we would be unified with one another, just as Christ is unified with his father. Number five, that we would be unified with Christ and be unified one to another. Our sixth step in intercessory prayer and our platform of prayer one for another is to pray for this individual that they might find joy not in the things of this world but in Christ alone that they would find joy in Christ look at verses 13 through 15 and now I uh, now come I to thee 
uh, at Christ speaking of his ascension again. And these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled, completed in themselves. I have given them my word, again, the preciousness of God's word. I've given them my word and the world hath hated them because they are not of this world, even as I am not of this world. We need to pray for one another that we might, that, that the individual we are praying for might have joy that is found only in Christ. Because folks, we struggle with trying to find joy in this world, and it's not there. It's not there. The world provides a brief satisfaction of happiness. Sin is pleasurable for a season. But the joy, that, the, the endless joy that we all strive for, that the world strives for, is only found in Jesus Christ. We know this. Pray towards that end as we encourage those that are around us through prayer. Number seven, pray that God would keep them from falling and failing and evil. Pray that God would keep them from evil and to progressively become more like Christ and sanctify, sanctification. That seventh, the seventh step, I'll say it again, God would keep them from evil and that they might become more like Christ. Pray towards that end. Look at verses 15 through 17. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Again, be in the world, but not of the world. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Pray that God would keep this person from evil, from failing, and pray that God would sanctify them through the power of his very word. Pray that they would stay in the word so that they might become more sanctified. I'm going to back up to step one. I'm going to go through them and we're going to get to step eight. Okay. Pray that the glory of God might be paramount in their lives. Pray that they would make known the name of God. Pray that they would prioritize the word of God. Pray that they would remember whose name they bear and who owns them. Number five, pray that they would be unified with Christ and unified one with another. Number six, pray that they would find joy, not in the things of this world, but in Christ alone. Pray that God would keep them or protect them from the evil one or protect them from evil and failing. And to pray that they would progressively become more like Jesus Christ, that they would become more and more sanctified through the word of God. We get to number eight. We find it in verses 18 through 19. We pray that they would allow the power of the gospel to work in their lives, in and through their lives. Again, number eight, that they would allow the power of the gospel to work in and through their lives. Verses 18 through 19. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. Again, the beautiful, a beautiful small verse explaining the Great Commission. Verse 19, And for their sakes I sanctify myself that they also might be sanctified through truth. Folks, the gospel is powerful. I spoke on this quite a, probably a year ago, how the gospel is not just for the lost, it's for the found as well the gospel for the lost and the found the gospel is powerful to change people to be to uh, to to save but also to change we're not done with the gospel now that we have just trusted Christ we live out the gospel on a daily basis and that sanctification that God that Christ himself is talking about is the gospel more and more on a daily basis shining through your life and shining through my life. And we pray to that end. 
not just for ourselves, but those who we're praying for, that those people would allow the power of the gospel, the good news, to work in their heart, to sanctify them, and to work through their heart, that they might be a light and a salt. Folks, we're called out and sent for a purpose. Just as God sent his only begotten son into the world, we are then sent into the world to proclaim the good news of the gospel. Pray to that end, not just for ourselves, but for those we are praying for as we intercede for them before God. Number nine, we're almost done. Pray that, the love, pray that they would love God above all else. It's a simple prayer, but it's potent. Pray that they would love God above all else. Just as Jesus loves the Father and the Father loves the Son, that perfect love, that holy love, that, that powerful love, pray that they would love God above all else found in verses 20 through 25 let's read those briefly neither pray i for these for these alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their word again christ prayed verse 20 christ prayed for you and for me i put in my bible a little dash and next to them okay so neither pray i for these alone but for i circled them drew a line and put in Caleb, my name, but for Caleb also, which shall believe on me through their word. Christ prayed for me. Christ prayed for you. Verse 20. Awesome. Awesome. Awesome verse. Uh, verse 21, that they all be one as thou father art in me and I and them that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me and the glory which thou gavest me I have given them and they may be one even as we are one I in them and thou in me that they may be made perfect in one unified and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them and thou hast loved me father I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me from the, before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. Again, that they would love God above all else, and that we would love Jesus above anything else, and that we would look forward to the day where we stand before him in glory and worship perfectly we get to see him as he is we get to be in God's very presence that we would pray towards that end as we pray for others Lord I ask that they would love you above all else we get to the final number 10 that they would love others as Christ loves them. That I would love others as Christ loves me. Look at verse 26. And I have declared unto them thy name and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them and I in them. What a precious verse of Scripture that Christ recognizes how much he loves his Father. Christ recognizes how much his Father loves the Son. The expectation is that we love one another in comparison to how Christ loves the Father and the Father loves the Son. Unbelievable. That is impossible for us to do, but it's something to absolutely dedicate our lives in doing and to strive to do with every ounce of emotion, of passion, of, of 
legitimate concern of unbelievable love that we would love others just as Christ loves the Father and the Father loves the Son. Lord, step 10, I ask that they would love others just as Christ loves them. Again, this 10 step process is a fail safe because this is the pattern after this is pattern after Christ himself and how Christ prays for us. I want to prioritize others in prayer. In my prayer, I want to lift others higher than myself. Yes, does that mean that I never pray for my needs? No. Scripture makes that clear. We need to ask and it and it be given to us. We we have to take that step. But I don't want to stop there. I want to pray this passage for others. Does it take a little bit more time when I pray for others? Yeah, because I go through John 17 and pray these specific 10 steps. But that's okay. If we're praying for one another like this, we're going to be unified. If we're praying for one another like this, we're going to grow. If we're praying for one another like this, it's going to be very hard to be upset or angry or disappointed in one another. If we strive to love God as God loves the Son and as the Son loves God, and if we strive to love God as, 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 as God loves us, and if we strive to love one another as God loves the Son and the Son loves the Father, it's going to be very difficult for the devil to get a foothold in this church. And in our lives. Even though we may never hear it. Uh, even though they may never hear it or see it. This side of eternity. May we make the commitment. In this platform of prayer that God has given to you and to me. To all those who claim the name of Christ. May we commit to utilize fully. Our platform of prayer for the honor, for the glory, for the promotion of Jesus. That's my prayer. We're not perfect. But may God and through the Holy Spirit, through the work of the Holy Spirit, change the way that we pray. May we understand this beautiful platform of prayer as we intercede for others just as Christ intercedes for you and for me. Let's pray together and then we'll be dismissed. Lord, Father, we are humbled to come into your very presence because we look at our lives and we realized how messy we really are. We look at our lives and see blood on our hands and on our hearts. We struggle with sin. We waste our time in things that aren't eternal. And yet your son now intercedes for us. What an amazing thought. And I pray that you would cause that thought to become very real in our lives. And in, by, and in doing so, Lord, that we would be anxious to bring others before your throne, just as Christ intercedes for us. May we love one another as you love us. May we love you more and more each day. Lord, cause us to hate sin more and love you more daily. Change our prayer lives to pattern after your son. We pray this in his name. Amen.
As Joseph sought the Lord his God with all his heart, God laid on him a burden he would bear, yet not alone. The Lord was with this holy man to bring to pass his master plan through foreign lands. God walked beside his own. I'll never leave you, never forsake you. By water still, in pastures green, I'll often take you. But when I seem to take away your song. Though you may never understand, just trust in his upholding hand. In time you'll learn he's been there all. green, I'll often take you, but when I break